There are a lot of ways to increase your RV living space without buying a larger RV. This week, we'll show you a few expandable options you may seriously want to consider. If you think you're seeing more and more RVs flying flags these days, well, you are. It seems like everyone is adding a flagpole to their trailer or motorhome. This week, our friends Jason and Tammy decided to do just that, as it also gave them a place to mount their CB antenna. If you love farms and looking for an interesting place to spend a weekend, then head to Ulster, Pennsylvania, where you'll find a Moonlight Alpaca and Garlic Farm. There's plenty to see and do there for the whole family. Later, who said bran muffins are just for seniors? Yvonne Schmatter whips up some bran muffins in her RV kitchen that even your kids or grandkids will enjoy. These stories and more, plus our double holiday contest on this week's RVing Today TV. RV designers are finding some creative ways to give us more living space in our RVs. And how they're achieving that is what's interesting. In some cases, they're expanding up or expanding out and occasionally adding a room where none existed before. And they're doing this with a centuries-old material, canvas. Now, this is not the canvas our forefathers used under covered wagons and tents, but lighter, stronger canvas. And in some cases, the material being used isn't even canvas, but high-tech vinyl and nylon fabrics. While attending this past RV industry open house, we couldn't help but notice all of these canvas additions. So, we decided to take a closer look at what some of these companies are offering now. Currently, most of these canvas extensions and add-ons are being used on smaller camping and travel trailers, along with a few Class B motorhomes. But, larger trailers and toy haulers are expanding up and out also, especially on the rear tailgate decks, with some nice enclosed screened-in additions. A lot of this modern creativity and engineering goes beyond the actual addition itself. If you look closely at this four-room extension on the back of this Cyclone toy hauler, you'll notice there are no metal corner or roof poles. Rather than metal framework, these additions are supported by inflatable tubes, which make the whole unit lighter and easier to set up and take down. Where and how they add this extra sleeping space, I guess, is up to the imagination of the designer, and no more is this evident than on these next two examples. First is the Forest River Novo, with its added nest, as they call it. It's a complete enclosed tent that sits on top of the roof of the Novo and adds extra sleeping area beyond the normal interior space. And you can bet the kids will love this. On the same note, we found the same type standalone tent enclosure even mounted on the roof of a Jeep. So, as we were saying, Canvas editions are only limited to the creative minds of designers and engineers. Some ways of adding additional space can be as simple as a pop-up roof that gives you a few more inches of headroom. Two, a pop-up roof that can not only increase headroom, but also add additional sleeping space, like we see on this Heimer Class B motorhome. So, how creative and extreme can canvas editions go? Let's check in with Jeff Johnston, who seems to have found one trailer manufacturer that lets you decide how many additional rooms you want to add. For a somewhat different camping experience, if you're going to go off-road, get into some really rugged places, and take it all with you in comfort, there's an expedition trailer. This is from Crux Expedition Trailers. This is the model 1610. And what you see here is the way it goes down the road. Everything is all packaged together. All the cabinets and so forth uh, contain all of the goodies for the, for the trailer. Now, when you get to the site, it unfolds in a number of different ways. If you're gonna be spending a whole bunch of time, like several days, you can unfold the entire unit that folds out to 211 square feet, approximately. If you're just gonna be overnighting, you do stage one, which is more or less uh, the, the top sleeping tent that opens up on top and a little annex on the back. And then if you're gonna be spending a little more time or you wanna expand a little bit more, you can add the side awning on the side and maybe one of the little rooms. And if you're gonna be spending several days, you do the entire suite of rooms that gives you 
the trailer with the sleeping space up on top, a large tent space on the side, a little annex on the end that lets you have a place to put, say, a portable shower or you know, a toilet or something like that. And there's a space on the back that has room for, say, a couple of cots if, if you're gonna have guests coming sleeping with you. And this unit is designed strictly for heavy duty use. Dual independent suspension axles, uh, uh, super heavy duty hitch assembly, uh, the frame and all, it's, it's all galvanized or otherwise treated for rust resistance. Uh, this is really a unit that, that is unlike most of the tent trailers that you'll see out there. It takes a few more minutes to set up, but like anything else, once you've done it a couple of times, a unit like this Crux Expedition trailer uh, can provide a type of comfort and convenience and living, livability out on the, on the most rugged trails you can imagine. It's a little different and it's meant to be. Well, as you can see, we weren't kidding when we said when it comes to RV canvas extensions, things are popping out all over. To help you celebrate the holiday season, we brought together our partners at GoPower and RecPro for some great twin holiday contests. Two contests means twice the chance to win. The RecPro winner can choose from either a 67-inch RecPro Charles wall hugger sofa with center console or a pair of RecPro 30-inch RV wall hugger recliner chairs with your choice of colors. The Go Power winner gets a 500-watt DuraCube portable power station paired with a 100-watt portable solar panel kit. Plus, we'll be drawing five weekly winners for a Go Power 8-watt portable solar power pack. To learn more, visit rvtoday.tv and click on the contest link. All of us at RV Today TV, RecPro, and GoPower want to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season. Aquacam Tossins. So fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Aquacam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. Let's catch up with Jason and see how easy it is to install a flagpole buddy system. For a number of years, Tammy and I have wanted to have a flagpole on the back of our travel trailer. Looking around the internet, we found flagpole buddy. It's American made, can do Starlink, and really well built. Stick around, we're about to install it. The package from Flagpole Buddy comes with everything that you need. All of the tools, clear, concise instructions, and even the flag. So easy, you can do it in your driveway or even in a campground. The instructions are really clear. First, we assemble the key components on the ground. This makes things a lot easier once we are up on the trailer. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the top bracket. The instructions call for it to be as close to the top of the roof line as possible. Once you have the top section on, do not tighten the bolts down fully yet. Next, we're gonna go and put the cup on the lower level. Instructions say about five feet from the top unit. Once the brackets are mounted on the ladder, it is time to loosely fit the flagpole into it to get your proper spacing. Ideally, the top bracket should be on the lower section of the pole. This is gonna help keep it strong. And now that the brackets are mounted on the ladder, it's time to go on to the flagpole. The flagpole comes in multiple telescoping sections. The top section is held in place with a spring-loaded button. The remainder use pins. There are four flag clips that allow you to have two flags on the pole. Now that we have the flag on the pole, time to put the pole in the trailer. A pole strap is included, which provides extra hold in high winds and a dampened noise inside your RV. Well, that's it for the installation. 
took about a half hour of my time, nice and easy. It's an extremely well-made system, made in America, can be used for your flags, your Starlink, even your ham radio antennas. For more information or to order a pole system, visit flagpolebuddy.com. Greetings, Jeff Johnston here for RVing Today TV. If you're ever looking for a campsite that's a little bit different than the usual, you might try an Indian casino. We did, and we were pleasantly surprised. An Indian casino can be a terrific option when you need a place to camp. We spent a night at Rolling Hills Casino and Resort, just south of Red Bluff, California, on the Interstate 5 freeway. The roads are wide and easy to drive for large RVs, and the campground is behind the casino, away from the I-5 traffic noise. The campsites, mostly pull through, feature easy driving access and full hookups. A few blooming bushes added a touch of color to our visit. A golf course, partly under construction during our visit, is conveniently close to the campground. We only stayed one night, but it was a pleasant experience and we'd do it again someday. An Indian casino is definitely worth a look when you need a spot to stay for the night. For more information, log on to our website at rvingtoday.tv. the road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between. Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. Hi, this is Michelle Fontaine for RVing Today, and we're visiting the Under the Moonlight Alpaca Garlic Ranch. This is a working farm. Alpaca, garlic, poop. Yes, let's hear it from Karen. Afternoon, Karen Burlingame with Under the Moonlight Alpaca and Garlic Ranch. My husband and I moved here 11 years ago. It was his family property, and we began collecting, as I say, alpacas. I gave him six to begin with because he's allergic to wool and alpacas are hypoallergenic, so he couldn't tell me no. And then we started rescuing. We've taken in three or four different herds, but we're at 33 currently. We also rescued some donkeys. Uh, we keep the girls on one side of the property and the boys on the other because they're pregnant for a solid year and they can get pregnant two weeks after they give birth. So once a year we do an annual shearing. We call it our annual Naked Alpaca Party. Next year will be our 10th annual. We serve breakfast and lunch and the farm is open for the weekend. It's the weekend after Mother's Day. And I belong to a co-op that I send my fiber up to Massachusetts and then I buy back finished gloves and socks and boot liners and then from there, and yarn, and then from there I hand make hats and scarves and some other odds and ends, a blanket or two. And then I do purchase Peruvian sweaters like the one I have on because I love my alpaca sweaters. You can wash them and throw them in the dryer. All of my hats that are on my mannequin ladies have a wire brim in them that I hand make and they are 100% alpaca. And so we have grown from six alpacas, as I said, to 33 right now. And we really do enjoy them. They're a totally green animal. They use a common poop pile and that gets raked up and it is the best fertilizer you can use. Uh, hence, I went to a poo seminar to learn all about it. And we grow gourmet garlic out of our gourmet alpaca poo. <laughs> this is called the ladder braid. 
And this particular kind is called Purple Glacier. It's a medium flavored one. That's what both of those are. And then this is Leningrad. I sell it as a lollipop. And this is a spicy hot garlic. There's 150 different ones. Mm. And there are a lot of spicy hot garlics. I grow three or four hot ones. This is music. And music is a good, oh, garlic bread, tomato sauce type variety. We plant in on Columbus out on 4th of July. 99% of them are hardnecks, so their storage shelf is longer, usually anywhere from three to seven months, depending on where you keep it. It needs to be in a cool, dark place. As the sun was setting, we were gifted with this beautiful rainbow. In addition to the alpaca and donkeys and guinea hens mentioned, they also have horses and goats, and maybe some others I didn't see. <laughs> it's a very special place. You do need to be a Harvest Host member to have permission to go up there. And it's a limited space, but I was able to park right near the fence, and it was pretty darn level. Under the moonlight, Alpaca Garlic Ranch in Ulster, Pennsylvania. Remember, if you're looking for an interesting weekend trip, mark your calendar for the weekend after Mother's Day for the Naked Alpaca Party Weekend. You'll find more information on our website. To help you celebrate the holiday season, we brought together our partners at GoPower and RecPro for some great twin holiday contests. Two contests means twice the chance to win. The RecPro winner can choose from either a 67-inch RecPro Charles wall hugger sofa with center console or a pair of RecPro 30-inch RV wall hugger recliner chairs with your choice of colors. The GoPower winner it's a 500-watt DuraCube portable power station paired with a 100-watt portable solar panel kit. Plus, we'll be drawing five weekly winners for a GoPower 8-watt portable solar power pack. To learn more, visit rvtoday.tv and click on the contest link. All of us at RV Today TV, RecPro, and GoPower want to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. have a Truma Aquago instant hot water system, you can expect to make a lot of new friends. There isn't anything better for breakfast than a fresh healthy bran muffin and a delicious cup of coffee. Not being much of a baker, I'd gotten into the habit of picking up a few muffins when I went grocery shopping. It got a little bit spendy, but I was comfortable knowing that I was eating healthy. Then one day, my grocery store began posting nutritional information, including the calorie counts on the flavor labels. I've got to tell you, I was absolutely shocked to learn that my morning muffin had nearly one-third of my entire day's calorie allowance. Wow, that is just not good. So with a little research, recipe testing, and tweaking, I came up with my own simple and delicious version of my beloved morning bran muffins. These are filled with raisins, nuts, a natural sweetener, wholesome oat bran, and more deliciousness. But even better, they're fast to bake, so my muffins are now warm in the morning. Let me show you how easy these are to make. You'll be making them in no time. While it might seem like there are quite a few ingredients, you'll see how easy it is. Now, the way that we start these muffins is we've got two bowls, one for the dry ingredients and one for the wet ingredients. So first we'll mix up the dry ingredients. In this bowl, I have half a cup of whole wheat flour. To that, I'm gonna add half a cup of oat bran, 
right in like so. I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of spice mix. This is cinnamon, flax seed, lemon, uh, ginger, really delicious. I'm gonna add a couple heaping, half a teaspoon, so that's almost a teaspoon. We're gonna add some baking powder and that's gonna give it just a little bit of lift. We're gonna put one and one half teaspoons. Two, three, perfect, just like that. And we're gonna mix everything around. That's it, our dry ingredients are done and ready to go. Now for our wet ingredients. I've got half a cup of non-fat milk in my bowl. I've got a quarter cup of grade B maple syrup. You can also use honey or agave, whatever your sweetener of choice is. Just a nice natural sweetener, like so. I'm gonna put in some avocado oil and I'm gonna put in one and one half tablespoons. Avocado oil is healthy for you, it's delicious, and if you're actually cooking with it, it has a really high smoke point. So I always have a bottle of avocado oil in my pantry and one egg. The last wet ingredient we're gonna put in is some vanilla. I'll put about a tablespoon in, just add some extra flavor. Mix that into our liquid. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine the liquid into the dry ingredients. Really easy, I'm gonna just pour it right in like so and I'm gonna stir it around. You really just wanna stir it until all the dry ingredients are wet. If you stir it a lot, it gets a little bit tough. So just mix everything up just barely. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our walnuts and our raisins. I'm gonna use a spatula and I'm gonna just fold them in. And that's about it. Now we're gonna put our muffin batter into our muffin pans. Now, if you have a loaf pan, you can certainly use that. I've done that in the past, but I picked up this little muffin pan. It's non-stick. I've put a little bit of oil in it just because I want to grease it. I want my muffins to come out nice when they're done cooking, and it fits in my toaster oven. By the way, I've got my toaster oven right here, preheating to about 375 degrees on convection. So what we want to do is we're going to put our muffin batter into our muffin pan. We're gonna fill it about two thirds of the way. Here we go, pretty simple. Before we put them in the oven, the last thing we're gonna do is just sprinkle a little bit of coconut sugar on the top of the muffins. It gives them just a nice, sticky, sort of sweet topping. Really easy and not a lot, just a little bit. All right, and that's all there is to it. Now we're ready to put our muffins into our toaster oven. We have it on 375 degrees, convection. These are gonna cook somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. So let's get them going. Well, that's all there is to it. Measure, mix, bake, and enjoy. I'm pleased to tell you that these have around 200-ish calories each, less than half of the store-bought muffins. Try this recipe at home, put your own spin on it by adding your favorite fruit, nuts, or even switch up the sweetener. That'll do it from this humble road abode. Thanks for visiting, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org. For more information on anything you saw in this week's episode, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv.
This has been another fun production. <laughs>